Hello everyone and welcome back. It's time for Melissa and I to go fishing. We're in Baudette, Minnesota right now. We just stopped at Alice's family restaurant and got lunch, and now Melissa grabbed a couple things from Dollar General. I just got checked in here at Border View Lodge. We're in cabin 23. Here's our little bedroom with two tiny little beds. Here's our little TV. Couch that pulls out into a bed. Can't really see this very good. There's the door. Little refrigerator, stove, sink. I think there's more counter stop top space here than there is at a house. Here's a little bathroom, which is right off the bedroom. That's Canada across the river. That's the rainy river right there. And that opens up right over here in the Lake of the Woods. Okay everyone, well tonight we're just getting everything ready. I had to string a couple of the fishing poles and went over to the lodge and we ordered food and picked it up and I met a guy named Paul there. I walked in the door and he's a subscriber. Met him, seems like a real nice guy. You know, we're just up here for the first night. Never done this before so tomorrow morning at 6.30 I'll be over for the uh to see where we're going to be going pick up our bait and uh then we'll be off fishing so it's just about time for bed this is what it looks like right in front of our door that building over there is the lodge, the bar, the restaurant. And this is all cabins. Six thirty in the morning. I just went over to the lodge and got my map showing which fish house we're gonna be in. We're gonna be in fish house 18 on Muskie Road. 
7.15, I go over and get our bait, and then at 7.30, the whole convoy of people will be going out there. We'll be about, he said, 20 miles out. That should be exciting. on Lake of the Woods. more miles to go. Does he run into Harbor Road? I don't know. It looks like there's going to be a... I don't see a stoplight. <laughs> Oh, there is a stop sign for them. Or is maybe that's for us. Which means I should start slowing down now since we're on ice. Ours, 18. Yay. I feel bad for not helping you. That's okay, it's pretty slippery. I'm gonna just run through some through this. Melissa caught a small walleye earlier, probably, what was that one, maybe six or seven inches only? Yeah. Threw that back. This is a keeper here.
Oh yeah. I even say that that one is just a little bit too little, huh? Yeah, I think it's too little. Barely got him too. You had to work that one for a while. <laughs> well, burnt that side. <laughs> Always works that way. Zach and I were talking about it last time we were out fishing. As soon as you start doing something with food, you start getting a fish. <laughs> I never did bring the chicken wings. <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice one too. Walleye. Wow. Yeah, I'd say that's probably a keeper, huh? You think it's so? A little bit small side, but yeah. Melissa always has coffee after lunch, so we brought the coffee, in fact we forgot the coffee, stopped and bought coffee on the way up, uh, have the coffee pot with the percolator and everything, and then didn't bring a coffee cup. <laughs> There's like 10 things we didn't bring that we needed, it's kind of making this trip fun. Well we caught 8 or 9 fish today, we kept 4, and they want you out of here by 4.30 if they're going to clean your fish. So we're going to head out just a couple minutes before that, before the big rush of cars going out. Wind has picked up, temperature's dropping, tomorrow is going to be nasty. to land 20.7 miles. So almost 21 miles out. Yep. Well they cleaned our fish and brought them back over here, delivered them right to the door. It's lightly snowing out right now. Temperature is dropping, wind is picking up. It's gonna be a different day tomorrow. We went next door or over there to the lodge and we got the uh, New York strip meal with a loaded baked potato and a salad. And instead of cooking tomorrow because it would be almost impossible with how much wind there's going to be, I just ordered a supreme pizza and we're going to eat that cold in the fish house. Valentine's Day today, we're just about ready to go to bed. Good morning everybody. All I can say is it's nasty out here. Good morning. Temperatures again, white numbers here to keep. Our numbers are your wind chill, so we want to focus on that too, because that's gonna be a
try to film here because it's so windy, but today we're in cabin number seven. And this one is bigger. Yesterday's was eight by 12 and this is 10 by 12, so it's nicer in there. We'll go in there and get set up and see if we can catch some fish. You already got one? Yeah. It got off there? You felt it for yeah. a second though? Mm-hmm. Might need to check my bait. This one just will not take it. I mean, I can run that bait right. <laughs> We didn't see fish like that in the column though yesterday, really. Mm -mm. I mean, it's going all the way to the bottom. Mine is like exactly halfway down. It was halfway when I, but now it's almost to the bottom. And it won't. <laughs> Melissa has to pee really bad. And she won't just go into the snowbank, so she's going down to the outhouse. This is the coldest walk that southern girl has ever made. <laughs> I just had one bite, got it up about four or five feet, and it let go. I've caught one that I had to throw back. Oh, my bobber over there is moving. This one's set. I guess maybe that's just my middle. Alright. I got another one, but it's just not quite a keeper. First keeper. Nice. Yay. Didn't even get my bait. <laughs> Is it hooked on the ice? No, I can't see it yet. You should have your rod more straight out so it's not pulling the line there and it gets a little bit of play. Oh, might be a nice one, huh? You might have to grab it. All right. Now that's a nice walleye there. Yes, indeed. I'm guessing he'll have to go back, but we'll check it out. Nice job. She got a whitefish this time. Is that a whitefish or a tulipy or whatever? I don't know what that is, but it's a keeper. Yep. Nice. I'm just going to quit fishing and let you catch them today. This feels like another... Want me to grab nice. it? Oh, I think I got it. There's a nice keeper there. Yay! Yay. First perch. That's a pretty nice one, too. Yay! I'm it is a nice one. one. <laughs> didn't even get them. <laughs> the minnow's almost as big as it is. <laughs> See anything bending on there? Oh. 
that's been real slow this afternoon. They come by and check you in the morning within a half hour of when you're here. And then they check you again in the afternoon and right now I suppose it's, I don't know, 2.30, 3 o'clock. We'll probably stay out till 4. And he said that everywhere is slow and I'm sure that's because of the weather front that went through. And Melissa has so far the big fish of the day at whatever hers was at almost 5 pounds and I don't know, somewhere around 23 inches. The other biggest one was 19 inches. Now, I don't understand. I've got this minnow dangling, you know, four or five inches above the bottom. And I've kept an active minnow on there the whole day. I caught one fish out of here prior to lunch and nothing. The only one that we mainly catch it on are the jigging ones, which have like almost the same lure with a minnow. We tried doing minnow heads and it seems to work best with just a full minnow and a full minnow hooked like under the dorsal fin versus through the mouth and yeah no bites on this. And the wind has really died down from what it was this morning. Temperature is dropping but it feels a lot warmer than it did this morning just because there's so much less wind. Did you drop it all the way to the bottom? No, but you're just going back and forth. It's not even spinning in a circle. Yes, it is. Keep going in a whole circle. Okay. No, I didn't see your lower at all. What was that? <laughs> so it was going before. I think I've screwed this whole thing up. I'm trying to block the light here so you can see this. Move that lure again, please. There's Melissa's lure. Do that again. Okay, there it is. Right here. And that's pretty good for... 37 feet Yeah, 37 feet down. Well, this ends our fishing up here at Border View Lodge, but we had a really good time. Yeah, even though the fishing was slow today, we caught as many as we did yesterday. So yeah, now we'll go back. We spend one more night at, the, at our cabin. And then tomorrow morning, we head back home. We made it back to our cabin, dropped the fish off at the, they call it the gut shack, to get cleaned. They'll drop them off here later on when they're done. It's getting cold. The temperature's been dropping all day long. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We're just packing things up into the truck. Run over there and check out. It'll be time to head home. Up on there, it's the sled. Or on the trailer. Oh!
Hi, just out here. We got the stove going. My dad's coming out this morning. It's the morning after we got back from fishing yesterday. Thought I'd talk about a few things before I end this one. Uh, we had a really fun time up there. We did the three nights in a, the cabin and two nights fishing, which you or two days fishing in a day house, which you saw. Uh, it, the total cost on that was $898, you know, for the both of us. Things we would have done different, next time they have a meal plan that you can get on so that you uh, you can go eat there. They have a really nice breakfast buffet there. Uh, they pack your lunch, so like in the morning we'd get up at, you know, at 6 or 7.15, 6.30 I can go get my map, 7.15 you get your bait, you know, because that's all provided, and then you go out fishing. Well, if you do do the meal plan, they also give you a box and it has your lunch all packed in there so you don't have to do you don't have to worry about anything so we could have done the morning breakfast if we ate breakfast they would have lunch and then in the evening you know pick something off the menu like every night we got something and then I would bring it back to the room so I think we would have done that because that was like 140 a person so for $300 more I spent more than $300 buying you know the dinners and stuff over there and then tipping, or you know, it was about the same. I think I spent just about 300 on the three, you know, dinners that we had, and I would have got a breakfast and a lunch included, and I wouldn't have had to worry about anything. So I think we would have done that. So this would have been like a $1,200 three night, two day thing for us, and I think it was well worth it. I mean, everything is is real organized, and you know, they run you out, put you on fish, and and it was a fun time. So Melissa and I both had a good time and she said she definitely would like to make this an every year thing. So we'll probably definitely be going back to Borderview Lodge because you know I'm not affiliated with them in any way. They don't know who I am. I went to the, the bar to pick up the food one night and there was one person in there that recognized me. So that was kind of nice. His name was Paul. I'm not going to say his last name but um, yeah I saw him twice. I saw him up there the one night and then the next night nothing and then I saw him the last night before we left so so yeah but I mean it, it really was a, it was a fun time it's amazing how organized things have to be for them to get all those people to do you know everything and for it to go smoothly and for Melissa being from the south and the only time she's been out on a lake on the ice was I think the second time she came up here maybe I talked about this already um, she was here for four days. The first time she um, she came up here, we spent it at the tent, and the second time was at the hobby farm house, and she was here for four days. But anyway, that time there, we went over to my folks' place and had dinner, and then we're coming back, and we stopped at a lake called Twin Lakes. This, anyway, she walked out maybe 50 feet and was out on the ice, and I have a picture of her going like this on the ice, and for her to go from that to hey, let's drive 20, you know, 21 miles, 20 miles, 22 miles the second day out on the ice. That's a pretty big deal. We were in that fish house the uh, second day, and you could hear this crack coming, because when you're on the ice, you'll hear cracks, and you know, people are driving by, you'll hear it. And you could hear this crack coming the whole way, and it sounded like it was just coming, and then just like went right under the fish house and kept going. <laughs> and so, yeah, she remembers that experience too. If you're ever thinking about doing something like that, I would highly recommend it. It was fun. 15.4 degrees below zero Fahrenheit right now. I'll see you guys on the next video.